The internet has gotten it wrong about this guitar. The Miles Kennedy signature guitar is unironically great. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Dave with Beast Made Reviews, of course a channel dedicated to reviewing quality at different price points. Now I love guitar. If you watched my previous video on PRS about the SE DGT, then you know that I have a long history about really loving PRS guitars. Even though I don't own one personally, I really love the brand. Recently PRS came out with a new series of guitars. They released two different guitars with the same shape and different layouts. One of them was the NF53, which was kind of going after somewhat more like a traditional Telecaster. And the other was a signature guitar for Miles Kennedy, who is the frontman, singer, and also rhythm guitar player for Alter Bridge, as well as other projects. And I have to say, Miles Kennedy? really underrated guitar player. He's amazing. Now, PRS loaned me this guitar for review. I have since sent it back. Of course, they didn't ask me to say anything, but since they did send this to me for review, it's safe to assume that this is a curated piece, that this is the best they have to offer for this particular review. Now, I don't have any reason to believe that, but I understand if people assume that ahead of time. And before we get to the review, why don't you subscribe down below? I think you'll really love it here. If you like guitars, if you like to talk about quality, if you like EDC fashion, anything in between, I I think you really like the channel here. And of course, I'll have a link down below where you can find the best place to buy this if you're interested in that. So PRS, they released these two guitars. They look suspiciously like Telecasters. And when they released it, the internet went ablaze. Some people really liked it. Others didn't like it so much. I think naturally, a lot of people were looking for maybe a Silver Sky version of a Telecaster and not this. So their expectations were a little bit off from what actually came out. But have you tried one? I got to try this one and I am amazed at this guitar. Legitimately amazed. Now, PRS does things a little bit differently. They don't do things just like other guitar companies do. And in some ways, I think they have a more Apple-like approach to their marketing and their branding and things like that. Whenever they come out with a new product, even if it's a similar product to other products released in the zeitgeist, they don't name it. They don't use the same nomenclature and naming that traditional companies do. So AR or augmented reality becomes Apple Vision Pro. And Apple has a number of different things like the retinal display and things like that that are really a essentially the same thing, but they name it their own thing to separate themselves from their competition. In some ways, I think PRS does that as well. Some of their pickups and now some of their guitars have a similar type of naming structure. They didn't name these Telecasters or T-Style or anything else that resembles a Fender. And I think in one of their promotional videos, they called this a single cut bolt-on or something like that. They called it a different name for the guitar than what we associate with a Telecaster. And I think it's safe to assume that they're not really going after a Telecaster. They're going for a PRS guitar that kind of does a little bit something different than a Telecaster. They have their own sound. They have their own kind of flavor and spin. So I don't have the NF53, but I do have this Miles Kennedy. I'm going to talk about the specs on this. I'm going to have some playing samples, obviously, throughout the video. And I'm also going to compare this to a traditional Telecaster that I have, as well as a dual humbucker guitar and see how they kind of stack up. Now, Miles Kennedy loves PRS. He plays PRS live. He has a lot of other different guitars, naturally. He mentioned that this was kind of going after some of his favorite vintage-style guitars. So I think it's safe to assume that he probably likes Telecasters. And of course, Miles Kennedy obviously has great taste in guitars if he likes Telecasters, I'm just saying. 
All right, now let's get to some of the specs of this guitar. Now this has a swamp ash body, a maple neck and fretboard. It's a bolt on neck. It has 22 frets and a 25 and a half inch scale length, which is pretty different from normal scale lengths from PRS. They usually use a 25 inch scale length. This is more like the traditional Fender style scale length. The neck shape is what they call a Miles Kennedy, which is kind of a medium C shape, I would say. It has a 10 inch fretboard radius and the inlays are the bird outline inlays, which I think look really cool on this. It has the Miles Kennedy signature and owl logo on the headstock and truss rod adjustment cover. It has a bone nut. The tuners are the PRS locking tuners. The pickups are what they call the narrow field MK. They look very similar in size to many humbuckers. And the bridge pickup is slightly tilted, which I haven't seen a lot of people talk about, but that does change the sound. Now the electronics are pretty interesting. It has a five way selector. The first position, which is all the way down, is the bridge humbucker. Second position coming up is bridge humbucker with a neck coil split together. Third position is bridge and neck humbuckers. Fourth position is bridge and neck split. And the fifth position, all the way up, is the neck humbucker. There's also a push-pull on the tone knob for a slight high-end roll-off, but that's only for positions one through four, and not the final position on the neck. It also has a really beautiful premium gig bag. This, of course, is made in Maryland. It's part of their core line of guitars, their core bolt-on line of guitars. And this comes in a few different colors as well. Actually, quite a bit of colors right off the bat for a new guitar. The one I'm showing here, obviously, is just the natural swamp ash finish. <laughs> Let's get to a few things that I love about this guitar. First, the fit and finish is absolutely flawless, and that's exactly what I would expect from a PRS guitar. Anytime I play a PRS, I expect it to be perfect, and I, they always meet my expectations. They're always absolutely perfect. The finish is perfect. There's no dings, there's no scrapes. The frets are absolutely smooth and glassy. There's no sharp frets, there's no fret sprout. Everything is perfect. The wood looks amazing. So I have zero complaints. I really love the way everything feels and looks. The neck shape is very comfortable. More of a C shape, medium C shape. I would say, I think a lot of people will be really happy with this. There's nothing out of the ordinary with this neck shape at all. It's not too thin, not too thick. It's just in that Goldilocks zone of uh, neck shapes. So it's perfect. The fretboard is also great. There's, it has a slightly rolled feel on the side there. They took extra time and just making sure it felt broken in and playable. I love maple fretboards. There's also extra cutouts like on the belly carve there. There's a slight contour on the side. It's just a comfortable guitar. It's like the Mercedes of guitars. That's what PRS is a lot of times. They really went out of their way to make sure everything was comfortable to play and felt great. Great experience. And I love the bag. The bag is fantastic. I've come to really appreciate gig bags. And this one has a fantastic gig bag. Lots of great features in the pockets. The gig bag has a protector for the headstock. And then even the handle reminds me of high-end luggage in a way. Now I love Telecasters in general, so I really like a Telecaster bridge. Now this isn't a traditional Tele style bridge, but it's very similar in some ways. It has the brass saddles here, but this one went for two brass saddles on three strings each. And they're kind of tilted there so you can intonate it a little better. And one really cool feature that I don't think a lot of people have talked about is that the string on this top load, meaning you don't have to go through the body to put the strings on. They just top load on there, which is cool, very convenient to change strings. But what is interesting about this though, unlike a top loading Telecaster where the strings just go straight, this has a break angle. So the strings actually have a pretty significant break over the saddles, which a lot of people kind of contribute to having better sustain and sound. But I think that's a pretty cool touch. They made a new bridge and featured that in a top loading design. So it's the best of both worlds. Love it. 
I even like the owl logo too. I like how it's, it's almost an Easter egg, which I think is cool. I also love the slanted pickup selector too, which is a much needed improvement over a standard Telecaster design with the straight pickup selector. The slanted one, so much easier to change in my opinion, and so much easier to not hit it with your fingers. And I personally even really like the looks. I think it looks fantastic. I love traditional Telecasters and the way they look, but I also really like this. And naysayers, I will get to you shortly. <laughs> Let's talk about the sound, and I know that's one thing that you're really interested in, maybe more than anything. Now, I like the sound a lot, but I admit this was one thing that maybe grew on me a little bit more than maybe the other features here. Because this is a Tele style guitar, or at least it looks like a Tele style guitar, the natural thing that I'm going to do is compare it to my Telecaster, which is God tier. <laughs> then it also has humbuckers. So then it has to compare to my Parker Fly, which is also God tier, okay? <laughs> I'm going to actually talk about this Parker in a future episode. So if you're interested in that, let me know down in the comments. But first, let's go into a quick sound comparison between this Miles Kennedy, my Telecaster, and my Parker, just to see the kind of comparison between these sounds here. <laughs> Now, I don't know about you, but I found that these three sounded very different from each other. On the one hand, the Telecaster sounded bright and chimey, very much like a Telecaster, a lot of attack. The Parker sounded fat and smooth and round. It had more in the, in the low end, higher end output as well. And then you have the Miles Kennedy, which still sounded like it had some attack. It still sounded beefy and bold like the Parker. It still sounded bright and chimey in some ways like the Telecaster. It was kind of a middle ground between two humbuckers and two single coils. So it wasn't necessarily like it was comparing one to the other. It was more like it was fitting a space that the other two don't have, but it left out some of the kind of lower end and muddiness that some humbuckers can have, and it left out some of the ice pick that some of the Telecasters can have. So in a lot of ways, it kind of has some of the best qualities of both of those while eschewing the bad qualities. I found it worked great with a lot of different styles. I tried it clean. I tried it with a lot of dirt as well. I liked all the pickup selector settings. I thought they were all very musical. I found myself kind of playing more to drop D and kind of open D tunings. And really, I think this kind of almost sounds like a record. Like it has a kind of almost like a polished type of sound that sounds great with a lot of different things. And that was what really surprised me the most was just how usable everything was. Even the push pull, I like the push pull on this. I don't normally use my tone knob at all, but I found that the push pull was very usable and noticeable while remaining subtle at the same time. If something were maybe just a little bit too bright on a certain setting, I could just pull the knob and it would cut off just a little bit of a haircut on the high end and just kind of tame the highs just a little bit, and that made it great. It's not too subtle where you can't hear it. You can actually very noticeably hear it, but it's also very usable. It doesn't instantly go to mud or something like that. It just kind of sweetens up the sound. And if I ever get another custom guitar, I definitely want to implement this idea. It's great. <laughs>
of the in-between settings that this has has almost a an acoustic-like quality. It's not, it doesn't sound like an acoustic guitar necessarily, but there's a certain type of woodiness in there that reminds me something of uh, playing an acoustic live, which I found really fun to play with. Overall, I really love the sound. It had a lot of fullness without sounding too flubby. It sounds like a record. The clean sound, really beautiful and usable. Playing it on high gain sounds great without having to fuss with low cuts. It stays very full sounding throughout the range. The pickup selector was really great. A lot of usable sounds in there. You can tell this guitar is made for someone who plays a lot of music live because it has everything that you really want right there. You can tell there was a lot of thought put into this. So it was just a joy to use and play. Let's get to some cons. I also want to say there's not that many cons here, and so I'm kind of uh, hair splitting here a little bit. One is the tuners. I'm not necessarily a fan of these tuners, but these were not my favorite tuners overall. Also, the electronic layout is a little bit different. You have a couple of positions on there that are slightly different than what you might be used to. Personally, I don't normally like five-way selectors. I like three pickup selectors, but this isn't my guitar. This is Miles Kennedy's guitar, so he had five-way. Also, I really like the push-pull kind of tone cut that it has, but I really wish it was just a switch instead of a push-pull, or even a push-push knob would be a lot better than a push-pull. Also, I had a few different intonation issues with this guitar. I know that I could actually just work this out of a guitar with just a minor tweak in the setup of the guitar, but because this was a loner guitar, I didn't really want to do that. But you can even hear that in some of these sound settings where the intonation is just slightly off. Again, a minor quibble here because it's just an easy fix. Next are the looks. I think this would be an acquired taste for a lot of different people. Now, PRS doesn't normally just make a guitar look like other guitars. They want to do their own spin on things. They really seem to accentuate the curves and the natural kind of sexiness of a guitar, which I like. To me, I like the way that it looks but I understand why some people don't like it. It's very different than a Telecaster, and a lot of people love the traditional Telecaster look. This looks very PRS, but I read the comments. I know a lot of people think this is a weird looking guitar. I just disagree. I think this is a really good looking guitar. My main criticism though, with all of this, is just that they didn't make a guitar that was similar enough to a Telecaster. They kind of made their own thing. Now I haven't played the NF53, so I don't know if maybe that kind of scratches my itch for the way that it sounds. I know they're really going after kind of a noiseless kind of Telecaster sound in that one, but I too was also really looking forward to the kind of Silver Sky version of a Telecaster, the kind of bolt-on single cut from PRS, if you will. Now that criticism has nothing to do with this guitar. This guitar is actually fantastic. I was really surprised at how well it played and how it sounded too, and how it sounded different than my expectations, and how it sounded different than other guitars of similar types. It really kind of felt that it was its own thing and carved its own space. It sounds polished. It sounds great with a lot of different styles, a lot of different music, and a lot of different gain levels. It's extremely versatile and very usable in every setting, and it's been one of my favorite guitars that I've played by PRS. I don't think that you even have to like Miles Kennedy or Alter Bridge to really enjoy this guitar. It's spectacular all by itself. I think everyone should try out for themselves before forming an opinion. This is something that I would use all the time playing live. I play a lot at my church, and this is something that would just absolutely slay for what I do. This is not a Telecaster. This is something completely different, and the internet has it completely wrong. This is really, truly, a great guitar, one of the best from PRS, truly. I come to these videos expecting to be a little bit critical about some things. I don't have to say good things about a guitar, but I truly believe this is a fantastic guitar. I was surprised at how much I liked everything about the sound and everything in every way. Definitely check out this Miles Kennedy signature from Paul Reed Smith. Amazing.
I'll see you next time. I'm Dave with Peacemaker Views. Mm-hmm.